Welcome everybody and thanks for being here. I'm Stefano Sandrelli, I'm working for the National Institute of Astrophysics in Italy and I'm also the National Astronomy Education Coordinator. Uh, as you know, I choose to talk to you about storytelling, but before doing that, uh, let me carry you through a couple of day long tour of the educational astronomical resources of our institute. Of course, I'm kidding. Uh, let me for, uh, first uh, to share my, my slide. And uh, okay, let's, let's start. Uh, as, as I told you before, uh, let me mention a couple of things about our, our activities. Eduina uh, is uh, uh, the educational magazine of our institute. Uh, it has contents for um, teachers, kids, children, and so on. Uh, Play Enough is a platform which is multi-language and uh, it is for innovative education, coding, tinkering, game-based learning, and so on. And uh, finally, I want to mention at least the virtual reality project because it, it has already brought uh, to astronomical database 3D movies and uh, also to two innovative 3D uh, interactive movies addressed to SKA and CTA. Uh, this is of course very far to be a, an exhaustive list, but it provides you just some hints about what we are doing during this COVID uh, age. So what about storytelling? Uh, first of all, let's share a, a definition of storytelling. Storytelling is the, the social and cultural activity of sharing stories. Uh, whatever its content, its form, or its genre could be, a TED talk, a play, a movie, a novel, uh, a comic, and so on. Uh, in this sense, storytelling is a necessary muscle. Um, meaning what the famous uh, writer Borges writes about dragons, storytelling that dragons appeals to the human imagination. And so we find the dragon and storytelling in quite distinct places and times. Now, is storytelling a tool to improve, to improve learning? Sure it is. Uh, there is a, a long tradition about learning through stories. Uh, contemporary scientific literature is rather clear about this, especially in the constructivist theory of situated learning. Uh, the, the art of narration allows people to, to make experiments, to test hypotheses, uh, and to delve into concepts, to change point of view. Um, we can say that at, at its best, storytelling can create a comfort zone where kids can feel free to use their own competences, abilities, uh, knowledge. Um, let's say they, they let themselves uh, abandon to a curiosity-driven uh, approach, uh, much more than in a formal education setup. In, in short, uh, let's say that storytelling is just like digestion if you allow me, um, because we can internalize concepts, we can include them within our imagination and our comprehension of the world. Now, is, is it storytelling suitable also for science? Of course it is. Again, a long tradition from Galileo to our days. And it is also very easy to do for children and kids. So this kind of ideas were crossing my mind when when several years ago uh, I decided to, to give birth to a, a 12 years old girl, Martina Tremenda. In English, the name sounds as Marty Noti, something like that. I wish to create a, a coherent storytelling framework for some astronomical activities for kids, provided by our institute under the collective name of AstroKids. Uh, actually, AstroKids were born a couple of years before at the Observatorio di Palermo, in Palermo. Uh, then they rapidly diffused to our sites on national sky scale. AstroKids are encounters of kids listening to explanations by researchers playing astronomical uh, games like jigsaws or crossword puzzles. Um, they sing songs and, and so on. But at that time in Milano, I worked with a beautiful group of people having a lot of fun together just by inventing cra crazy games that the kids in our Astro Kids should have done. For example, a race of spacecraft pushed by 
uh, by the children's blows in a space-time which is infested by black holes or parachute to allow cows or tigers landing safely on Titan. Um, but I felt the need of a motivation. Why we are talking about black holes today or Titan? A crossword puzzle is not a motivation. A game is not a motivation. Then it can be a consequence of a piece of a story. So the fictional character of Martina Tremenda offered a reason to talk about black holes because she visits some of them and Titan too. And she visits all the extrasolar planets she likes to do. And she sails on gravitational waves and she has a lot of friends among the islands. Um, from several aspects, Martina can be considered the, the daughter of Pippi Longstocking, Astrid Lindgren's character, and Giovannino Perdigione, characters created by the Italian Gianni Rodari, an international Anders enterprise. Um, from Pippi, uh, Martina inherits the freedom, the willpower, the limitless talent of laughing and amusing and the power of friendship. While from the other side, from Giovannino, uh, Martina takes uh, uh, the, the ability of, uh, um, of uh, um, planet hoping, let's say, yes, uh, but with no effort, uh, and the endless wishes for a better world on our, uh, on our Earth. This is because, uh, Actually, is, uh, Giovannino Perciano is a, kid, is a kid who hopes on weight planets and uh, he does it without any effort actually. He finds ice people, chocolate people, paper people, air people and so on. They have all their own characters and social behaviors according to the matter they are made of. Now, Pippi Calzelunga, Giovannino, Martina, they are not necessarily politically correct. It often occurs in this world that if you wish to change it and better it, you must break some rules. Let me add a piece more. Martina builds a pedal spaceship, uh, which is in fact a space cycle for her trips. Um, her space cycle has its own will and they often discuss and try to understand better what they see and to clarify uh, to themselves their thoughts. Please note that, that we are talking about a girl who breaks stereotypes, uh, STEM or STEAM disciplines and how to approach diversity. So we are talking about inclusion, we are talking about equity. And in fact, of course, there are so many ways to pay a visit to a black hole or to encounter an alien. As you know, you can have a, a colonialist attitude or at the opposite, you can listen to those new words. Uh, you can uh, dialogue with them and so on. Now, <clears throat> several tens of activities were performed using Martina Tremenda with a very interesting result. We wrote a book adventures with several education materials. Um, we wrote a play with a professional company, professional actor, professional actress. Um, the play was replied more than 20 times in one year before COVID emergency obliged us to cancel it. Deborah Mancini plays as Martina, she's the actress. Roberto Piumini, a very famous Italian writer, uh, plays the artificial intelligence who drives the pedal spacecraft. And we have also a mouse named Hamlet. It's a, a quantistic mouse, meaning that uh, as Shakespeare's Hamlet, it does not know if he is a mouse or, or a cat. Now, the point is that kids see Martina as one of them. Uh, she set them free, and this is very easy to do. Uh, the, after the play, uh, they dialogue with the researcher. They are really free to interact among themselves with their teachers. And so it's also easy for us to talk with their teachers and to plan a longer education project together. So Martina must be seen as just the beginning of an educational path.
a way to allow children and allow kids to feel themselves free and in a comfort zone, even if we are talking about science. I'm now wondering if Martina has the strength to become part of an international project with PWU. Okay, so let me conclude that uh, just thank you for, for your attention. I'm here to answer to every question uh, from you and I'm happy you appreciated this uh, uh, this short by myself.